Hi, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to start building on your understanding of what graphs are. So we're going to talk about some basic graph shapes or a library of functions. Basically, man, some functions you need to know. Um, do you need to memorize them? Yes, but I don't want you to just memorize their shapes. I want you to understand why they're shaped the way they are. That's a big difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what these are. I'm going to talk about where what these functions are as far as um, even versus odd, what their key points are. That is the biggest thing we're going to talk about, and then why they're shaped the way that they're shaped, So, and how to remember some of these things. The reason why is because in the next video, we're going to talk about how to transform these, which means how to shift them up, down, left, right, stretch, compress, horizontally, vertically, reflect about the y-axis, x-axis, things like that. And if we don't understand how these graphs work, it's very difficult to, to not be not understand how they work and still be able to transform them. So we're going to have this understanding of what these functions look like, why they are the way they are, and most importantly, what their basic points are. So they're, they're key points. So we're going to start with this one. And then after this one, we'll talk about even versus odd and how these things are structured. So when we say, what's the function f of b actually look like? It says, uh, sorry, um, f of x equals b. What's that actually look like? It says no matter what you plug in, you get a constant. Uh, what's a constant function look like? That's going to be a horizontal line. So when it says plug in any x, you get out b. We got this idea of a horizontal line. Um, what what are it, what's its inputs? Yeah, all 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 real numbers. What's its output? Just b. I want you to notice right away though. That's an even function. It has symmetry about the y-axis. That's even, no problem. We have this symmetry idea. In fact, every one of these functions, the way I've written it for you, is even, even, even. That one's gonna be neater. And then we're gonna have odd, 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 and I'll talk about why they are the way they are. Let's talk about f of x equals x. This says that if I plug in an x value, I'm going to get that x value as an output. So the input and the output are both the same. I plug in 1, I get a 1. Plug in 2, I get a 2. Plug in 3, I get a 3. That right there says that if I plug in 1, I get a 1. If I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1. If I plug in 0, I get out 0. I'm going to pause there for just a second. I want to talk about how every single odd function in your library of functions is going to have two key points that are all the same. And then I also want to talk about how most of them have one key point additional to that. Every one of these odd functions is going to have 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1 as two points in your graph. Every odd function has that. So these are all going to have 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. Let's look at this. Take 1, plug it in. 1 cubed is 1. Okay, there's 1, 1. Take negative 1, plug it in. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. It has negative 1, negative 1, and it has 1, 1. Take 0, plug it in. It has 0, 0. But wait a minute. That's the same exact key points as that one. 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1. 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1. I know every odd basic graph shape is going to have those. That one doesn't have 0, 0, but almost for an obvious reason. How about the cube root of x? If I plug in 1, the cube root of 1 is 1. It's going to have that point, 1, 1. Plug in negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. It's going to have negative 1, negative 1. Plug in zero, the cube root of zero is zero. Keep in mind with cube roots, you can plug in negatives. A cube root of a negative number just says, um, what says what number when I take the cube root of it gives me this particular output. Or in other words, this output, if I cube it, would give me the radicand of that, that cube root. Well, what that means, because cubes maintain signs, uh, a negative cube gives you a negative, that means a cube root of a negative maintains that negativity. So we can plug in negatives and be just fine. This is not a one-sided graph. And it has the key points of 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1. The last function over there says, well, let's see. If I plug in 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1. So it has a key point of 1, 1. If I plug in negative 1, 1 divided by negative 1 is also negative 1. But if I plug in 0, that's a problem. Hmm. If I plug in 0, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. How does undefinedness look in a function? 
Well, we talk about that a lot in the many more videos than this, uh, but what this is going to give you is this vertical line that you cannot touch. Sometimes an undefined function means you're missing a point. We talked about in the last video how you just have this open circle, and we can have that. It's called a hole or a removable discontinuity. In this case, this is a vertical asymptote, and we will talk about why it's a vertical asymptote a little bit later. I can't, I can't, I can't wait for it. It's a vertical asymptote because the, the factor on your denominator that's giving you a zero, namely x, cannot be canceled out, can't be simplified away on your numerator. So we have this vertical asymptote. We actually also have a horizontal asymptote. What? Well, what's the one output value you can't get? Can you get an output value of zero? Plug in a number and give me an output for zero. Well, I, I can't. The numerator is one all the time. One divided by any other number besides zero is going to give you not zero. So this has a vertical asymptote and it has a horizontal asymptote. Here's what I need you to know about this library of functions. Number one, when I look at x, x cubed, cubed of x, or 1 over x, I have some key points here. All of these graphs have the point 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. Almost all of them have zero, zero. This doesn't because that point, that value for zero is not defined for your domain. So what, man, if all of them have one, one, negative one, negative one, and most of them have zero, zero, do they all look the same? And the answer is no. Here's what I would, would like you to structure your knowledge as for your basic graph shapes. Number one, these are all going to be odd functions. What that means, they will have symmetry about the origin. We can rotate them 180 degrees or reflect, reflect, and get the same exact graph out. They do have that symmetry. These will all be odd. The difference between them is that as our power increases, we, we sort of get more curvy. So like x to the first power is just a line. Our output equals our input. It's a line x to the third power is going to take that line and sort of, sort of curve it, give it more of a dynamic feel. If we have x to the fifth, it's even more dynamic. A cubic of x takes the, the x to the third and sort of rotates it, uh, reflects it about the y equals x line. They are inverses. We'll talk about inverses much later. But the way that this is shaped is differently. So what I need you to understand is, number one, every one of these graphs is going to have a, a key point of 1, 1. Every one of them besides your constant. Our odds are going to have a key point of negative 1, negative 1. Our evens are going to have a key point of negative 1, positive 1, because of the symmetry about the y. Almost all of them have a key point of 0, 0. The only one that doesn't is that one. So our, our features are key points and now shape. So the shape of our graph, our line gives us just this straight line. So f of x equals x is a nice straight line. x cubed is this graph where we still have this negative infinity to positive infinity idea on the y-axis, but it's definitely more dynamic than a straight line. The cube root of x takes this graph, rotates it about the y equals x axis, x takes this graph, rotates it about this line, and we get this This picture sort of flipped on its side. That's what the graph looks like. This graph is very weird. This graph says, I have a vertical asymptote. Asymptote is spelled like this. It means basically the MC Hammer version of a, a line. Do, 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 you can't touch this. You cannot touch a vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes, you can cross them in, in, in like some, some range, some interval of x-axis, but as you get to infinity, it's like way out there, you're not going to touch them, you're going to approach them. <clears throat> so what that means is that if you can't really touch it, your graph has to, well, let's see, has to, uh, has to go through that point, no problem, we know that, cannot touch this at all, won't touch this one at all, it's going to look like this. Same thing here. 
Some people call this the reciprocal function because you put an input in there and it reciprocates it. So you put in uh, like five, it gives you an output of one fifth. Put in five, get out one fifth. Put in one fifth, get out five. Put in negative one fifth, get out negative five. Put in negative five, get out negative one fifth. That's the way this graph looks. It is a rational function, sometimes called the reciprocal function. Here's the main point I need you to understand about this. Number one, all of these graphs have a key point of 1, 1, 0, 0, and negative 1, negative 1. The only one that does is that does not have 0, 0. They are all odd. Look at it. Look at how the symmetry is about the origin. I could rotate these 180 degrees. Even this one, I could rotate 180 degrees. Every one of these functions is odd. The first three are increasing the entire time. This is increasing, increasing, increasing at a slower rate, but increasing. This graph is always decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. So all of them are odd. All of them have key points. I need you to understand where they come from, why they look the way they do, and what their key points are. I need you to understand the increasing of the first three. I need you to understand the decrease in the last one. Those all have to make sense to you. I need you to get it. Your domain all real numbers, all real numbers, all real numbers, you cannot have zero. This does not have a value, an output value for the input value of zero. So your domain is everything except zero. Your range, all real numbers, all real numbers, all real numbers. So the interval of the y-axis that these graphs cover are all real numbers for the first three, but again, you can't get out zero. So your domain, interval of the x-axis that you cover is all real numbers. Interval of the y-axis you cover, so your range, all real numbers. Here your domain is all real numbers except zero, and your range is all real numbers except zero. All right, we got to move on to the, the, the evens. So the, these two, actually these three are even. Your domain, all real numbers, but let's look at x squared. If I wanted to define my key points here, let's plug in one. If I plug in one to x squared, I get out one. If I plug in zero to x squared, I get out zero. If I plug in negative one to x squared, let's say negative one squared is one. See, so that's the value of x. If I plug in one to the absolute value of x, absolute value of one is one. If I plug in zero to the absolute value of x, absolute value of zero is zero. If I plug in negative one, the absolute value of negative one is positive one. Are you seeing the evenness? Are you seeing that this has symmetry about the y-axis? I'm plugging in opposite inputs, I'm getting the same output. I'm plugging in opposite inputs, I'm getting the same output. This one's not, but I wanna focus on these two. So, let's go through it. Uh, well, and the shape of the graph. The absolute value of x is based on the function of x is based on that. It's just saying where you have negatives, I want you to make it positive. So it keeps this side, but it takes this and goes, ah, let's just make every output positive. It's gonna give you a V. That's what the absolute value of X graph looks like. Is it still even? Of course it's even. It has symmetry about the y-axis and has the, the idea that if I take negative x algebraically and I evaluate it for negative x, the absolute value of negative x is positive x for any, for any x. <clears throat> yeah. How about x squared? So with x squared, I'm not going to be a straight line. It's giving me what's called a parabola. That's a rough estimate of a shape of x squared. It's, it's this parabola, this parabola that we have. And then I plug in two, I get up four. It's definitely not a straight line. Is it even? Yeah, it has symmetry about the y. If I take negative x and square it, I get positive x for any value of x. Uh, that's, the, that's the idea. So these are our two graphs. I want to talk about them like we did here. Firstly, do you notice that every single one of them has the value of both of these, have the values of one, one, zero, zero, negative one, one. Every even besides our constant, every even basic graph shape is going to have that for you. You're going to plug in one, get up one, plug in negative one, get up a positive one, not negative one. You also have zero, zero. Um, notice how we're decreasing for this interval of x and then increasing, decreasing for this interval of x, then increasing. So our domain, all real numbers, domain, all real numbers, range, range just from zero to infinity range just from zero to positive infinity. 
the last one, the square root of x is an inverse of x squared. What an inverse means, we're going to find this out much later, is that you take your graph and you reflect it over the y equals x line. You basically flip it over a diagonal line. So it takes this graph and flips it. But in order to flip it, you need to restrict your domain. You can say, okay, well, I can only flip one part of this. Which one do you want me to flip? I want you to flip the positive part. Because if I flip both, I get this parabola that's non functional. It's not a function. I don't want to do that if I flip it over. So we're going to restrict it. What that means is that when we get our graph, you're only getting a one sided graph and you're only going to get this top part. If I plug in one, I get out one. Square root of one is one. If I plug in zero, I do get out zero. But just like this parabola has no negative outputs, this square root can have no negative inputs. If you just take it and put it on the side, domain becomes range, range becomes domain. I can't even plug in a negative number. We could try it. We'd say plug in negative one. The square root of negative one is I. I don't know what that looks like on a graph. Of course, because it's not a real number. And these graphs are based on uh, functions that have outputs that are real numbers. And so since we say that this has no real output, it doesn't have something graphically on a no real number system that we can graph. So this is not allowing you even to plug in negative numbers. That means you can't get anything out. There's no output on this interval of your x-axis. Our domain is just zero and more, so positive numbers, including zero. Our, our range is zero and more, so the interval of the y-axis this graph will eventually cover is from zero to positive infinity. It's basically half a parabola on its side. These are the graphs that I really need you to know. I need you to memorize their shapes. I really do. Uh, we can't afford to be plugging in numbers all the time because with transformations, it's going to take absolutely forever, and you're probably still not going to get a great graph. So what I want you to understand is that constants are horizontal straight lines. There's not a lot more that we can say about that besides they are constants. They maintain the same output value, and they are even. Then what I did is I organized these so that you can look and go, hey, every single one of these graphs is going to have some key points to it. Almost all of them have 1, 1, and 0, 0. So every single one of these basic functions in our library of functions has 1, 1. Every one of them. Almost all of them, with the exception of this one, has a key point of 0, 0. Most of them, so all of our odds have negative one, 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 negative one. All of our evens have negative one, positive one. And then the only one that's in, uh, neither has neither of those. That should make sense to you. I want you to organize your thoughts like that. Organize your thoughts like, okay, uh, man, our, our odds have one, one, zero, zero, negative one, negative one. Our evens have one, one, zero, zero, negative one, positive one. There's a neither that has neither negative one, one, or negative one, negative one, because you can't plug in negative one. And then our kind of awkward function or reciprocal function doesn't have zero, zero. Does it make sense to you? Uh, are you seeing that uh, we have one, one for a key point on all of them? We have zero, zero for a key point on almost all of them. We have negative one, positive one for our evens. We have negative one, negative one for our odds, even this one. We're missing zero, zero on that. We don't have negative one anything for our square root. I need you to memorize key points. I need you to memorize the shapes of these graphs. That's really important. I hope I've done a good job of explaining to you why they are shaped the way that they are how to kind of view some of our awkward functions in terms of our previous functions, where we're increasing, where we're decreasing, and whether we're even or odd. Get that down before the next video, because in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to transform these, how to shift them up and down and left and right. Our key points and our shapes are crucial for that. So I'll see you for the next video.